All right, all right. Let's get into it. The code in the Bible, chapter two. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And that's how chapter one ends. I don't see anything spectacular. I mean, he's he's God. So, I mean, it's just, it's just every just another day for him. We think it's miraculous these things that he did, but to him, you know, yeah. So. What's the mystery? It's like knowing your mother can make this bad, just awesome, upside down seven up pound cake. You tell all your school friends about it, like, oh, my mom can cook, she can bake, she can do this, this. It tastes so good, you gotta have some. Then as you get older, it's like, hey, Ma, you know what I got to taste for? Some of that pound cake. You going to make some tonight? I guess, maybe. I mean, you're excited, but you're not, like, on pins and needles. But you know she can do it. So it's like, when it comes, it... It's no surprise. You knew she could do it. That's why you asked. God is an awesome God. He can do it. But we gotta ask. We've seen the evidence of what he can do. And to ask God to grant you power to overcome your circumstances. <sighs> He's not going to sit up here and baby you. He's not going to sit up here and spoon feed you. Your mama didn't do it. Once you learn how to eat, you pick up the spoon and you feed yourself. And that's how God is. Once he teaches us how to eat, we feed ourselves. So if you don't get your butt up, if you don't pick up your hand and pick up the spoon and feed yourself, I guess you're going to starve. Well, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Ask him. But guess what? You got to put in some work. I don't care what you ask him. You got to put in some work. People don't understand the devil can grant wishes too. Just to just to mess with you. Yo, yo, watch this. I'm gonna get this nigga a car and a house. He gonna lose it all. It's gonna it's gonna wreck him. It's gonna wreck him. Oh yeah, man, I got this dude. Got this dope chick on my side. I got this car. Yeah, I got this money, man. Yeah. But did you get it the right way? Then a couple of years later, the police come along and take everything you got. Meanwhile, the dude that was suffering, the guy that you looked down on that was suffering, that was praying, I just need to get this one good job. The one that was going through the struggle while you was coming up. Now you going down and he's coming up. The right way. It took him longer. It took him longer, but now he got the car. He got the job. The baby will come later. The, baby, the, the woman will come later. So, 
enough of that. Let's get into it, shall we? Some people have a hard time reading, so I angle it. Mm. So it'd be easier for people to maneuver the screen if it's a phone or a tablet. Mm. Chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Done. He, at this point, he's done. <sighs> he can breathe a little. And all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And his work, yeah, excuse me. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because of what? Oops, excuse me. Because they do a lot of double talk. And I don't understand that. I never. Uh, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. This constantly saying the same thing over again in a different way. Not too much different. God made the seventh day. The seventh day he made. It was like, okay, I got it the first two times, you told me. Can we move on? Uh. So, he made the seventh day. Of course he was going to make the seventh day. Why wouldn't he make the seventh day? He didn't work for six days. Might as well make a, a, a seventh day to just chill. Sit back, relax. Uh, and be done. You know? So... What's so special about the seventh day? Hmm? These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when the when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Man, if they don't get out of here with all this. Excuse me. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. So, the herbs, the plants, the fruits, the vegetables, all this was already there. The first one's free, I like to say. The first batch was free of charge. Those plants, they fed the animals. Didn't have to worry about weeds. Now, being the, the scientific, great scientific man that God is, sometimes there are side effects. And we all know, as human beings, when they come out with a drug that's supposed to cure your ailments, there's always side effects. Hmm. Now, what to do about these side effects? Ah, got it. I use the humans to keep all this craziness under control. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. 
not exactly sure. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not God. I wasn't there, but yeah. We have a role to play in this. He built this magnificent earth. He created us. And we are the caretakers of the earth. We're supposed to have dominion over the earth. But guess what? The earth sustains us. So if we mess it up, we hurt, only hurt ourselves. So, yeah. I think we better take care of the earth. Sounds like a safe bet. So, sounds like a, a definite yes on that. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb every herb of the field before it grew for the, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain unto the earth and there was not a man to till the ground but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground and the Lord God formed man of the dust Now, some people might get confused by this because I just, I had to catch myself. I'm like, okay, why do it sound like he creating mankind on the seventh day when it just said he rested on the seventh day? <sighs> what people have to understand is that majority of the Bible was written after the people in the story were dead and then the Bible was translated. There was no English back then. Comprehend, understand people. The Bible was not originally written in English. There was no such thing as English. As years passed down, it got translated to, to English. It was in German. It was in Arabic. It was in Latin. It got transferred to English. And it's possible that some people put stuff in the wrong spot. A lot of people were like, oh, well, you know, you can't add to the Bible. You can't take nothing away. A translation is just that. A translation. You taking a word or a phrase or a sentence from one language and you trying to find the equivalent in another language. So how can you sit up here and honestly say that nothing gets nothing ever gets lost in translation? Bull crap. You say the wrong word you say the wrong word at the wrong time and you could set off a whole war I think there was an article I'm not sure but I heard this was years ago probably a decade 10 years ago at least this guy got lost I think it was a guy could have been a female Anyway, he, he did sign language. He he had some some communication issues. So he did use sign language. He was in the wrong side of town. He got badly hurt or killed because a gang member thought he was trying to represent some gang when all he was doing was trying to communicate the best way he knew. And I bring that up to say, how in the world can somebody sit up here and try to force down the people's throat that nothing ever gets lost in translation? The Bible is full of small mistakes. Just 
to overlook those mistakes, that's where the problem comes in. But we're human. The Bible was written by humans. If you want clarification of what's in the Bible, ask God. The Holy Spirit is just that. It's a spirit. God does not have a human form. He can be anywhere at any time. He's in the air. Center yourself. Take a deep breath. And pray. However you pray. If it works, if it gets you results, then go with it. If meditating helps you, if speaking out loud in a, in a private room helps you, then do that. Ask them for forgiveness, ask them for clarity, ask them for understanding. And throughout your travels, just remember, you'll have better results if you actually put in the work. Don't just sit up here and think, oh, well, all I got to do is just pray and it'll happen. Remember, we just read that there were vegetables and fruits, herbs, all across the earth. And it hadn't rained yet. But in order to st sustain those things. He knew there was going to have to be some type of nourishment. To keep it going. So even if you just happen to get the car. Somebody bless you with a vehicle. Somebody bless you with a house. Even though you might luck up and get a good job. Understand, you need to be able to sustain those things. And that's where God comes in. You didn't been blessed with all this stuff. So now you got to sustain it. If you like what's going on in your life, you got to keep it. Okay, Lord, I got this, this, and this. I'm very blessed. I appreciate everything you've done for me. How do I go about keeping what I got? Remember, God said to be fruitful and multiply. You can't multiply if you ain't got nothing to multiply with. Make sense? Mm. So, he makes a mist to come fall upon the earth to water the plants, to give the plants nourishment. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst. Now, like I said, at first glance, it would seem like, oh my goodness, somebody done messed up. 
how they going to say God rested on the seventh day when he just not getting around and making men. But wait a minute. Did he say he made men earlier? Hmm. Well, let me tell you what I think. They ran down a list of everything God did. And then, later on, they explained what he did or either why he did it. He did not make mankind on the seventh day. This right here is an explanation. That's all it is. He made, he made man when he said he made man. All this is, is an explanation. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward of Eden. And there... He put the man whom he had formed. See? And there he put the man whom he had formed. Past tense. Formed. That's past tense. That means the man was already made. He's talking about the Garden of Eden. Context, people. Context. He's talking about the Garden of Eden. So what did he do with Eden? He made Eden to put a man in there to till the garden. If it works, if it's if it works, what is God about? God is about abundancy. God is about creating something, seeing if it works, if it's good, multiplying that. So you create your Eden. You put a man in there, you put animals in there, you put a woman in there, and if the experiment works out, it goes viral. It goes worldwide. A lot of scientists think, oh, well, maybe, maybe we're not the only ones. Maybe we're not alone. We couldn't possibly be the only ones. Oh, yes, we could. We could definitely be the only ones. God is the ultimate scientist. There is no greater scientist. All throughout Genesis, it talks about him creating something. He saw that it was good. It never talks about the stuff that he saw that was bad. Think about it. He never talks about the stuff that was bad. You toss away the bad stuff. Even in Egypt, when we talk about ancient Egypt, what does the professor always say? They really don't record the bad times. They only record the good times. That's not to say there weren't bad times. That's to say they tried to ignore the bad times. Just like, just like ignorant white people want to ignore that slavery and prejudice and racist ever existed. You don't want to talk about the bad times. You just want to talk about the good times. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, we could, poss we could possibly be the only living human humanoids, whatever you want to call us. We're so hard-headed. We're so Ugh. If if he felt like this was a failed experiment, no, he would not have put life form as we life as we know it on other planets. He would have not built another human species. No, no, no. There's probably some animals. 
on other planets, yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. Wouldn't doubt it at all. But yeah, so... He created mankind. But what to do with him? Let's give him his own spot. Let's give him his own spot. We're going to create Eden and put man in the Garden of Eden. The whales have the water, the, the birds have the tree branches and the air. So we gonna put Adam and Eve in Eden. We gonna give them their own little spot. Mm-hmm. And that's the way that goes. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden and went out of Eden to water the garden. Now see, that that still bugs me. Because it says God put mankind in. He put Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. But this is, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Huh, interesting. So is this a misprint or is the garden of Eden right outside the gates of Eden what would be Eden what would be the city and then the garden or is it that what they're trying to say is that the river begins in the garden of Eden the river's on one side and it flows through the garden and out of Eden. It's only one or two possibilities. I'm, I need help, y'all. We got we to gotta figure this out. We, we have to figure this out. And the river went... I'll show y'all what I'm talking about. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So does this mean the gar- the, the river started in Eden, went through the garden, watered it, and then went out? Because if it was a waterfall, it probably would have damaged the plants from impact. Unless it was a mist. Could be heavy rainfall in that area. And then as the water builds up, it kind of just makes its way out of the Garden of Eden. I'm not sure. Um, I need help on this one. Y'all will have to help me understand this one. I really want to know what, what exactly what am I reading? Because I'm a little lost on that part. 
is the garden out right outside the city of what would be Eden, or is the garden in Eden and the waters are flowing out of Eden and become four rivers? <sighs> Hmm. I need more info on that. Uh, we're going to continue later. I just... Mm, wow. All right, guys. That's all for today. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing this, this verse, this message of understanding. And I will chat with you later.